Okay, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are talking about dating, sex, and relationships today in Hollywood. So it's all about that Friday feeling. We have two experts in the house. We have Rhonda Richard Smith and we have Amanda Cockrell. And you guys are, I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome to Good Morning La La Land, right. our yeah. first Friday special guest. We're so excited to have you. Thank it's really you. an honor. Thanks. So Amanda, Thanks. you were an expert or worked for eHarmony, correct? I did. I did matchmaking and date coaching for eHarmony. Wow. Amazing. Yes. Cool. Great. And then Rhonda, you are a psychotherapist and have been considered by Match.com, one of the experts. 2017, this year, Match.com named this lovely lady one of the best dating experts in the country. I don't know how you wow. get a title like, like that. Mind blowing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I thought it was a prank call. To be yeah. honest. Did you really? I did. I did. What really you exciting. You up and they just said, we want you. I got an email yeah. stating that um, the CEO had identified me as one of the top relationship oh. experts, and they flew me to Dallas to uh, meet with some of their analytics folks to talk wow. about uh, the direction of the company and where they want to go. So how do you them. feel but about that? So gangster. It's, it's good. Right? It's yeah. good. That's right. a lot yeah. of pressure. Yeah. Good. It was like yeah. celebration yeah. on that one. Yeah. It was yeah. congratulations. No, it was really exciting though. It's always exciting. I love talking about mm -hmm. dating and relationships and mm -hmm. so innovation. I, when I, I mean, there's so many things I want to talk about with you guys, but one is that I think that the whole dating industry has changed. The industry <laughs> was a good one. Um, has, I mean, the whole dating world has changed dramatically. Well, Aaron, you bring up a good point. You just called it an industry. It is an industry. It is an industry. You all three mm -hmm. have a living on dating. Right? It's true. But it's changed so much, I would say, for sure in the last 10 years. And it's changing dramatically every year so much. So how do both of you guys see, like, where do you think it's going? I think, meaning, like, are people moving away from committed relationships? Are they, mm. how, what are the trends that you're seeing? Where do you think it's going? So interestingly enough, just like all trends, it seems that things go one extreme way, and then people realize, OK, we went too far, and then they come back. So I've been seeing that a lot with dating, online dating. So at first it was just, let's just stay online. No one was meeting up and it just became anti-dating. We just were talking online and no one was meeting right. up. So with my clients, what I told them, and they pretty much all agree is get offline as soon as possible. So introduce yourself. Great. But don't spend a month chatting. Just try to meet up. And I've been seeing that trend where people are tired of online. So they're trying to meet up as soon as possible. So it's sort of gone back a little bit. Wow, I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is so nice to hear because I think people love while it's, and it's so beneficial, the online thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I just feel so much of a deeper connection when I'm not online, right? Yeah. So it's a great way to initiate something. But if you want to take it beyond that, it's good. Get stuff. offline. Yeah, and there's some dating apps that have actually been created that consider that component. So mm -hmm. you can only have a certain number of interactions oh, wow. online wow. and you have to meet in person. And they'll actually plan the location for you. Wow! Oh, that that is so true. It's like so it kind of forces you. Yeah, it's like yeah. the goal is actually to just get the actual date. Right? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. But yeah. is it that yeah. is it the goal? Because I think sometimes people feel more comfortable just having a companion online and talking to them, so they don't feel alone. Like, are they really pulling for a relationship? Well, that's the key. I think it's it's really making sure that you're ready for a relationship mm -hmm. because I think so many people want to be ready. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a lot of internal work that you have to do first yeah. before you really know. I always call it like the, um, I, just, it seems like people want a relationship, but they only want the good parts of a relationship. Mm. It's like, it's not just about all the, you know, if you just want that, it's your, I, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a, you're only looking for the good times. It just doesn't, it's not a real relationship, right? Always the peaks and not the valleys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So where do you see the industry going? I think that, um, Part of why it's so important when you're looking at online dating specifically you get to pick out all the all the great parts like you said so you want someone that has a particular job who lives in a particular area right we were mentioning earlier um, but you eliminate so many people along the way when you do that and what I've noticed is that so many people will have a list of exactly what it is that they think they're looking for, but when you look at the behavior of who they're actually attracted to right. or pairing with, mm -hmm. it's nothing like the person that's on paper, <laughs> ever. Right. So I think it's about getting clear about what you want, not what other people think you should want, mm -hmm. or what society says, but what really works for you. Being honest mm -hmm. with yourself, right. you're gonna have a lot more success and a lot, lot less uh, self-sabotage. But do you think dating in Los Angeles is exceptionally harder? I do. Mm. Yes, yes. Why, Why do you say that? 
I, the landscape is really different in Los Angeles. Obviously, we have the entertainment industry, which is huge here. Um, and so people are really caught up in the facade. So they're caught up in presenting a particular way. It's all smoke and mirrors in Los Angeles. <laughs> There's a lot of smoke and mirrors. So, you know, you can be in love with that piece, but you're not really getting to know the actual person. So is that kind of like being in love with the ideal or the idea of what the relationship is as opposed to Could the you actual? Jeslin? Who yeah. said we're well, yeah. expert? <laughs> Dropping dimes, yeah. dimes, yeah. dimes. Experience, experience. experience. Uh, so I'm yeah. just still trying to figure it out. Yeah, they call uh -huh. it in uh, Sex and Love Addiction. It's an AA 12 step. It's called a fantasy addict. Yes. That they're in yes. love, they fall in love with this romanticism mm -hmm. and the facade of what that person is and what the relationship is instead of the reality of what I think I'm going to rename mm -hmm. that. That sounds hot. It sounds like <laughs> I want to be that. <laughs> Fantasy attic? I'm in. Yeah. How am I not? No, what we call that <laughs> is ego. Yeah. Uh, There's that's so the psychology. Much that ego. ego. And, and we gets were, me every you know, time. I was just having a conversation last night actually and the biggest problem with dating is yourself. It's not the people around you that are all screwed up. Dating in LA is not that hard. It's it so much easier to put the blame on them, though. It's so yeah. much That's easier true. to put the blame on them. Yeah. So true. But guess what? We tend to date out of ego, out of pride. Mm -hmm. What looks good, it's not a coincidence that it's such a cliche mm -hmm. that six-year-old men are looking at 20, 30-year-old women. It's right. not because they have more in common. It's not because there's going to be bigger <laughs> sparks. It's because they're going to look cool right. in front of their buddies. So I have a question <laughs> for you guys. So I consider my... My friends that have done their work, they're like awake versus not awake. Mm -hmm. And when whether they're in relationship or not, what I find is that my awake friends know their triggers. Mm -hmm. They know what they project into relationship. They know their dark, their shadow side. Versus my friends who are not awake, they do the reactions and they're always pointing the fingers. They never go, oh, here's my crap again. Here it comes, right? So how do you, how do you recommend for someone who's out there dating how do I know if someone's done their work or not? Like, I mean, I know how I would do that, but I'm curious to know from your perspectives, you know, how what you would recommend for people to kind of weed through that and get to that early on. Like, Great have question. they done their inner work? Sure. Well, I think one thing that I always look for personally and with, you know, that I recommend to my clients is see how people treat other people, first of all, and see how they talk about other people. Totally. If you're going to mm -hmm. go out on a date and you're already with someone who's just talking bad about other people or gossiping a lot, etc., that to me is a big key mm -hmm. indicator that they're focused more on putting the blame on other people. Totally, completely. And not looking at mm -hmm. how they talk about their exes. If they're like, oh, it was a victim oh, story. God. You're right. like, oh, yeah, we know. Yeah. They've not done their work. Or about <laughs> how they talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and also the the amount of what the time that people spend like how they spend their time what their behavior mm -hmm. looks like yeah. so if they never have time for themselves to reflect if there's someone who's always busy 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 yeah. um oh, chances are, sure. <laughs> <laughs> are they having a lot of time to reflect to do some self-reflection mm -hmm. to kind of check themselves out check themselves see where they're at um so behaviors will tell you quite a bit mm, i love that I and love how they that. treat you mm -hmm. Guess what? The people that I've typically found that have done a lot of work often are very interested in you. You can tell they're genuinely interested. Mm -hmm. They want to know more, and they're not just trying to chit chat. They actually are interested, and I think that for me is a, you know, huge right. key. Well, you you brought up a really interesting com comment or concept about doing their work, and if you're not in Los Angeles right now or living this la la land life, you might not understand what doing their work really <laughs> means. Do work. <laughs> That's do so work. LA. That's so LA. LA. So what is their work? What are you, what are you referring to? It's like, what is this thing what called am work? I, what am I supposed to be doing that I'm not doing? Yeah. yeah. I think taking time for yourself. I think, um, and I think growing up in childhood, I don't know if that's something that we always learn growing up, what that looks like. Taking time for yourself, taking quiet time for yourself to reflect. We get so many different messages from the media, from our friends, from our family. And sometimes the, the messages are really well-meaning, right? Mm -hmm. But at some point, sometimes it's hard to sort out, okay, what are my own thoughts right. versus what are her mm -hmm. thoughts versus my mother's thoughts. You have to be present enough to be able to kind of silence the noise and really get centered with yourself on what you think and how you feel. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you're always going to have more success in everything. So when did you do that? Because you obviously did it early to now be the expert in 2017. Well, in my graduate program for my master's, we had to go to therapy. So oh, part of yeah. becoming a therapist yeah. is that you have to go to therapy right. yourself for my program. Such well. a great topic. We actually have to take a little break, but I'm loving this conversation. It's so important. So when we come back, what I want to know is 
how does how does someone take that break? Should they take it between relationship? Have they actually had some time to not take? Maybe that's the best plan for dating. So we come back, we're gonna learn more about that. And then also how to deal with being lonely during the holidays or being, if you're in a relationship, how do you deal with stress in a relationship, okay? So stay tuned, you guys, we'll be right back. And we're back. Good morning, La La Land, talking about dating, love, and relationships. And no, we have so many experts here today, but yeah. what's the question you wanna ask? I've got so many questions for these uh, lovely ladies. The one question I actually wanna ask personally is, have you found what you do to be a hurdle in dating itself, ah, right? So you're dating question. experts. Does it get in the way of actually dating and meeting people and connecting with people? Do people expect you to be perfect? And <laughs> people, people definitely expect me yeah. to be perfect, yeah. and I usually disappoint them. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not perfect. Yeah, crush that expectation Don't right it. away. Right. Yeah. Luckily for dating, I don't have that issue because I've been married ah, for 14 years. Wow. Congratulations. How, thank you. However. You know, if, if we're having an argument or something comes up, my husband will quickly say, well, that doesn't sound like what a dating relationship oh. expert should say. It doesn't sound like, Burn. really? Yeah. So that's like his little go-to dig. Mm. But um, yeah, but I think in terms of connecting with people, um, whenever they hear what I do, it's like, oh, I have so many questions for you, or I need to send my ex to come and see oh, you. Oh, certainly. Your yeah, ex, that's yeah. the best. Yeah. 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 People yeah. instantly want to be your friend, especially yes. if they're single, because it's like, oh, I could have a lot to gain. Yes, yes. lots yeah. of questions. What about yes. you? Yeah. Uh, so, at yes, at, I would say that people are very interested at first. Um, I also used to be a clinical therapist, so now I'm doing more coaching, but that's my background. So as soon as people find out that you do therapy or date coaching, they're so interested. So it sort of depends on the kind of night I'm having. I usually, if I just want to keep quiet and not talk to people, I usually just admit that part. <laughs> that's the best thing to do. I don't yeah. say anything because people are so interested. It's kind of a niche little yeah. little field, and, and they do expect you to know everything. So they right away will ask you crazy questions where you're like, Never thought of that. I yeah. I don't know. I'm just eating spaghetti. Right. I'm just eating spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Right. So yeah. funny. I used to tell people when um, they would ask me, "What do you do?" And I would try to sort of Get skirt out. the issue <laughs> and uh, ultimately just say, "I won a lottery. I'm a lottery winner." <laughs> because you really? yes, I just had to turn it into a joke because I knew otherwise it's a hurdle. You either get talking about things. Um, like dating relationships, and then just becomes kind of weird because yeah, he shows up in this great outfit. He's like, I'm a dating expert. He's like, I'm screwed. <laughs> no, but I think lottery. if he told me he won the lottery, I'd be more interested in him than right. the Right. That's also, a, yeah. I know, that, that could backfire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then on date number three, you're like, by the way, I didn't win yeah. the lottery. I have to work for a living. Yes. And this is what I do. I so I have a question regarding the holidays. So I believe that whether you're dating, in a relationship or married, you still deal with the same things. You still deal with having to communicate. You still deal with having to court and you know bring the romance. All the things are the dynamics stay the same, really. So during the holidays, you know a lot of people deal with loneliness. In fact, one out of five Americans are kind of lonely all the time. They say that about 75% of the population becomes lonely at some point in the week, and the holidays we know gets even worse. So what do you recommend for people, whether you're in a marriage? Because you're going to be lonely in a marriage. What do you guys say as dating experts? Because really it's about the psychology behind all this. But what do you recommend for people? I think there are definitely some difficult um, emotions that can come about, obviously, through the holiday season, particularly if you experience some kind of trauma as a child, mm -hmm. um, if you lost someone during the holiday season. Sometimes those issues will come up year after year around the same time. Um, so what I typically suggest is that people kind of create their own new traditions. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you're not kind of replaying in your mind what happened years ago at that time of year. You kind of create your own um, traditions, your own that. activities. Um, but how it is. soon is it okay to create your own traditions with somebody? Oh, as soon as you as soon as you feel comfortable doing You're so. You're date number three. We've got a new holiday tradition. <laughs> oh no, not 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 during the dating process. Oh, okay. no, 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 not 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 during the dating process. I mean, I think it's it depends on how long you've been together and how the both of you feel about the holidays. Now, if you have a partner who isn't that jazzed about the holidays per se, it might look a little different versus someone who's really pro Christmas or pro Hanukkah and they have a lot of activities that they want to incorporate you in. So it really depends on where you're at in terms of how you want to celebrate the holidays. How they want to celebrate the holidays. Communication. Kind of come into a, a happy medium. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't want to even talk about it. 
Let's just pretend that we are, are we gonna do presents, not presents? What do we do? Like, yeah, why'd like, you just talk about it? <laughs> how much money do we have to spend on each other? Yeah, do you right? come to my family's? Do I go to yours? I mean, like navigating that outside of being in a committed, you know, marriage mm. but when you're just dating is super weird during the holidays. Yeah. So, so I just pressure. changed my number. Awkward. Right yeah. holiday, I <laughs> changed disappear. my number, contact your information, yeah. and then back online again, <laughs> January 1st. So, time for the new starters, yeah. <laughs> Well, so you know, it's such a good question because the holidays and Christmas particularly has the highest rates of suicide. Yeah, right. It's really mm -hmm. kind of a tragic thing. Um, I think that if anyone's starting to feel sort of lonely, which we know obviously a lot of people do, I think the best thing you can do is sort of de-emphasize the meaning and, and just rationalize it, knowing that it is a commercial holiday and sort of distancing yourself from the emotional aspect of the holidays, which sounds kind of like a downer but uh, the other thing I recommend too to people that are feeling that way maybe that don't have a lot of family that have maybe lost a lot of people or that have just a very dysfunctional family that they maybe don't want to spend time with or they're single start making your own little community right. maybe join support groups mm -hmm. um, build up a different network that maybe will take away the pressure of the holidays and that'll focus more on some type of healing mm -hmm. because you you're know, obviously dealing with so much lot. better advice yeah. than I would get I'm mean, using <laughs> no. like adult videos crash other people's parties <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. Travel, travel is eating. great for the Dressing. holiday season yes. as well. Get it's away. Tying in with that. Just get away. Go somewhere else yeah. where maybe the holidays aren't mm -hmm. as big of an emphasis. I love that. Awesome. Distraction mm -hmm. is healthy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Knowing that you, there's always a solution. If you're yeah. feeling a certain way and you are the type of person that you brought up earlier that mm -hmm. can be introspective and that's doing work, try to figure out what's triggering you and try to find ways around working for, uh, towards not feeling that way. Self-awareness. Always, yeah. always ways around it. Yeah. And so during the holidays, let's just pretend someone's just on their second, third date or something like that. And Christmas, do you buy, what do you guys think? Well, because I think it's obviously, it's individual. Everyone has their decision of what works or not. But what do you guys think as far as dating? Should somebody get somebody a present or not? Or what level do you think that that's at in the realm of dating and, and Christmas? I don't think it's something that should be forced because when you're giving gifts, it really needs to be genuine. So depending on how your dates have been spaced out, if you guys have been together for several months, you feel a strong connection with them, then I would say sure, give. But um, it's really the thought that counts. So if you're just worried about the semantics of is it appropriate for me to give a gift or not, maybe it, maybe that's not the right time. One, I'll never forget my roommate <laughs> a couple of years ago before she had just started this relationship. And I was the middleman in this gift exchange. <laughs> and she, she, he had come to me and he said, you know, I'm going to get her this Prada purse. She had had her eye on it and I was so excited. And then she came to me and said, I got him a grill set. <laughs> and I, I said, a grill set? Mm. Like you bought him a grill? She goes, no, tools, like a barbecue set. It was like 20 bucks at Target. And I was like, you're going to need to buy it. Yeah. And so she came back with another idea and I was like, no, keep trying. Keep you're going to need a Prada purse. Like you're going to have to keep trying. Yeah. And she ended up making this beautiful painting for him. Wow. It was yeah. so thoughtful. So cool. But it's really interesting because she was in a totally different headspace than he was in that. And if they wouldn't have had me the little like magic elf in that situation, yeah. that could have gone really right. wrong. It just brings us to a conversation about love languages though, right? Right, that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what do you guys feel about that? I mean, some folks, everybody expresses their love differently, right? Yes. And um, I know that personally, I'm more sort of words of affirmation. You know, some folks are more gift oriented, but you know, how do you deal with that, particularly in the initial stages of dating? when you don't know someone's love language? Is there a way to figure it out? Is there a way to sort of meet someone halfway so that you don't end up in that situation where you bought a thousand dollar Prada bag and he- Try a lot yeah. of thousand. Well, I'm trying to be easy about it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. I mean, I think that love languages, that takes such a long time. I know for myself and my husband, it took us a long time to figure out, oh, this is your love language and this is mine. He loves, you know, the tasks, so doing things for him, he loves that. Oh, That's, interesting. He could do a million things for me does nothing for yeah. me. So fun, does right? nothing. I like gifts. I, love that. Yeah. I like gifts. Completely different. Uh, so we have to take another break, you guys. Um, so we're going to come right back, and we're going to um, have you guys in on the final segment. We don't normally do that, but this is such an important topic, with love and dating and relationship in the holidays. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back. Good morning, La La Land, with segment on dating, love, and relationship. Every Friday, we're going to be talking about this topic. And so I want to know, and so many people want to know, we've come to the decision that we want to know how to meet people offline. Mm. 
Mm. That is the question of the hour, right? Especially here in Los Angeles. Where do you go? I think people are creatures of habit, so everyone wants to go to the same places that they've been going for years, mm -hmm. with the same people that they've been going out with. So I would encourage people to go out a little bit more on their own. Mm -hmm. um, going out with friends is nice, and it's nice to socialize with our friends, obviously, but when you're trying to meet someone, it's a little easier when you have a smaller group, maybe one other person, mm -hmm. or maybe by yourself, and going somewhere completely different. Maybe venturing outside of your city, heaven forbid, in LA, right? venturing a little bit, a little ways outside of your actual neighborhood so you can actually meet someone different versus the same hundred people that you're running into again and again. I just go put on like high heels and go into the grocery store and I'm like, what? Well, I can't reach that up there. <laughs> great, place. Up this <laughs> great place to meet people. Yeah. Grocery store is a great place. Hey, I've, I've gone out with people that I've met at Whole Foods. I think it's mm -hmm. again about doing a lot of inner work. So if you're going out and you seem available and approachable, People will talk to you. Going out alone is fantastic. I know it's kind of weird. I'm not saying go to, you know, catch by yourself or, you know, some, somewhere maybe that's not as appropriate. But, hey, whatever. I mean, <laughs> you could even do that. There's no rules. <laughs> you, you can go anywhere. And the more available you are, the more people are going to come talk to you. I meet people out anywhere. At the gym, mm -hmm. Whole Foods. Hotel bars on the are street, a great place. Literally walking on the street. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you say that because um, a lot of my celebrity clients actually go out by themselves all the time. Yeah. They take themselves to movies, they go to dinners, yep. literally. Um, so it's really great advice. But right? if I'm going out by myself as a girl, I'm definitely not going to go talk to a guy. Mm. Let's yeah. be honest, I do not, not be comfortable with that. If you want to come talk to me, yeah. fantastic. I'm definitely not going to go talk to you. Good question. So what would a woman that does want to talk to a guy or a guy that wants to talk to someone. Yeah, to or how do I just get comfortable <laughs> enough mm -hmm. to do that? Yeah. I think you have to at least position yourself physically for them to mm -hmm. be able to reach you. Mm -hmm. You can't sit somewhere way in the corner where they're never gonna oh, be able to see you bar. or reach you. Sit at the bar where everyone is seated, mm -hmm. so you're by yourself, but there are other people around, there's conversation. So you're really making yourself available. And I think when you sit at the hotel bar, it also demonstrates that you are open to conversation. I think holidays are good for that. To go to a friend's holiday party gets you into a completely different mm. community. But that's why I like online dating because I don't want to be hit on by some stranger. What? I thought you were just at the store. grocery store I'm reaching joking. for a turkey. Right? Right. Right. All the guys out there are like, see, this is my problem. <laughs> How do I deal? Yeah, exactly. No, I can't. Like, is it at Saturday she's a freak and Sunday she's <laughs> avoiding me like a plague. Okay, so I have to say something and address what you're talking about. I used to feel exactly the same way until I started doing my job and I realized I am so getting in my own way. The way I do that with approaching guys or that I recommend my female clients to go talk to guys, you don't have to go and talk to guys as in you're going to flirt with them. Humor. Humor is always good. See, if improv, at, you gotta take it. If you're at the grocery oh, store, funny. <laughs> say so something funny. funny about the tofu. I don't know. Something, you know. Oh my how, god, I'm the queen of the joke falls flat. So I think I'm funny, <laughs> and then I say something, and people are like, what, was that a joke? <laughs> I was like, well, I try, but. But you gotta try. And you gotta not be afraid of looking a little silly, because guess what? Maybe you will look a little silly a couple of times. But maybe on the fifth time, you're going to meet someone who's totally awesome and maybe wasn't paying attention. And, and actually thinks I'm funny. <laughs> actually <laughs> thinks you're funny. And next thing you know, you're going out. And in, in my experience, and I'll, I could be wrong, but with most guys, most guys are used to approaching women. And so they're, they're compassionate, generally, mm -hmm. when a woman approaches mm -hmm. them. They, they know how big a deal it was for you to say anything to them at all. So they're usually you know, pretty uh, forgiving that way if you see even the silliest thing. Do women hit on you often, Ron? All the time. <laughs> it's, it, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I don't, the funny thing is with me, I never even feel that a woman's hitting on me, even if she is. I mean, I'm just connecting. I, I'm like, yeah, yeah no it's just idea. fun for me. I don't think of it that way at all. I don't think there's anything particularly special about me that would make her feel that way. I mean, I see my own beauty, but that's in the same way that I see everybody else's beauty. It's not anything different. Clearly, you've done your work wrong. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. came the hard way. So we only have a few minutes left. Any other tips or things for the holidays for dating? What would you recommend for last little bit for people out there? Mm. Um, I would say, you know, during holiday time, depending on where you're at in the dating process, you always want to keep in mind it's tough when it's a new relationship, but you do have to have some element of vulnerability mm -hmm. um, in order Definitely. to really make a relationship work. 
Um, so it's, it's common for walls to be up in the beginning, but you have to be willing to let those walls down over time. Right. And if not, then that's some more of that inner work that you have right. to do. One of my favorite um, sort of quotes is from A Course in Miracles, where it says, in my defenselessness lies my safety and power. Oh. Right? Oh, that's so cute. You need an every, affirmation. Every, every now and then, I, yeah, yeah, I give it to you straight. Every now and then. I would say, lighten up. Have mm -hmm. a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. I always recommend, especially the first few dates, do something active because you want to get those good chemicals going on in your brain. That's a bonding chemical mm -hmm. as well. So taking it less seriously, not that dating is not serious, but going with a less serious approach, mm -hmm. I found as just worked miracles. Go ice skating, go nice. bowling, do something fun. Great. Don't feel like you have to go sit in a stuffy restaurant and be stuck with another person. Be outdoors good for the brain, it'll bond you, and it's life. Nice. Advice. Mm -hmm. nice. advice. So how can people find you? What are your handles? I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm Amanda underscore Cockrell. Uh, you can find me across all social media platforms at Rhonda Smith LCSW. Ooh. And so can people work with you directly, one-on-one? -on -one? I'm actually launching a group coaching series uh, in the first half of the year, so that'll be coming soon. That's yeah. exciting! Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, really exciting. Love it. So, yeah. So find these ladies online. Uh, also yep. doing the same thing, but yeah. I do do one-on-one -on -one okay, coaching wonderful. as well. Okay, yes. Yes. Wonderful. Well, I just want to say that we've had the most amazing first week on Good Morning La La Land. I wanted to say thanks so much to Jazz and Rob. So amazing. And just to recap just a minute, tell them about the week and the themes of the, of the week. Do you want to sure. talk about that? Go ahead. Well, I'm trying. Yeah, okay. Well, well, we've got yeah. Motivational Mondays. Yeah, yeah and Transformation right? Tuesday. Wednesday, we've got a really great program on wealth and Wisdom. careers. Thursday, Thought, Thought Thursday. Thursdays, and Friday, of course, like you saw here. Feeling. Feeling Fridays, Love. Freaky yeah. Fridays. Love in relationships because we have two incredible experts here in the house at Good Morning Lala and Dr. Aaron and at Rob Mac official on Instagram. <laughs> uh, and it's just been an incredible opportunity, I can say personally myself, in, in working with you and yeah. learning and absorbing and being a part of this. And it's been such an honor to get to know you ladies. I'm sure you're going to come back in. Maybe I'll go to your courses. Yeah. <laughs> Let you know how that's going. But it's been an incredible week, a historical week here at Focus TV. Right. Monday through Friday, we went live at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And we are the first daily live streaming lifestyle talk show in the country. Wow. We are here in Los Angeles and we want to be a part of your community. This is a show for LA about LA. Yeah, and we're bringing, we're bringing consciousness, wellness, lifestyle, positivity to the current events and having it topics and takeaways, experts, interviews, and all the above. So I just want to say thank you guys for showing up for yourself and for us as a community and I'm so honored to be here. So thanks you guys. It's a, I'm just so happy. Celebration of the first week. So absolutely. It's a good day in La La Land. It's gonna be a good day, La La Land. Bye you guys. <laughs>